Hello students, in this video, I'm going to talk about the requirements gathering process and the seven key questions you are supposed to ask every time you participate in a requirements gathering meeting with your customers. I'm a Cognos Jedi, but I'm not a magician. I have to depend on my customers for the data. So here are seven key questions you are supposed to ask when you participate in a requirements gathering section with your customers. Number one is, First, try to get your customer to give you a sample of what they expect. So this could be a mock-up of the dashboard or, or the report so that there aren't any disappointments when it comes to delivering the final report or dashboard. Now, over 90% of business intelligence projects fail because a lot of the times there's a lot of poor communication. I'm going to show you a funny image or a cartoon that I found on the internet where the customer was expecting one thing but ended up with something totally different. This is key. Make sure that your client can at least give you an idea of what they are expecting. Number two is to show samples from your portfolio. I have a ton of Cognos reports and dashboards. So when I'm talking to my clients or my customers, I just show up, I pull out my laptop, and, and I show them all of their options. This is important because it reduces the amount of time it takes for me to complete their projects because I already have a lot of the code written down already. For example, if I want to use a token for a dashboard or maybe a repeater, I can show the client what to expect if I apply those features within Cognos Analytics. Now, because you are taking my course, I hope that you are building a portfolio because ultimately it is going to help you a lot in your future. Now, number three are filters, prompts, and the business rules. Now, you know what filters are, you know what prompts are, but the business rules will have to come from the business. Maybe your client wants you to calculate the variance between last year's um, sales versus current year's sales. Those are called business rules. The clients or your customers will give you that information, but you need to ask them. I don't care how basic, even if it is a social security number, some clients might want you to put a dash or a bar in the social security number. And it's a good idea for you to ask just so that you are sure. I mean, in terms of prompts, ask your client if they want to see the prompts on the prompt page or if they are okay seeing the prompt on the main page of the report. See, these are some of the things you need to be aware of when you go to a requirements gathering section. Number four is important, the list of columns that your customer is going to need. Now, it's important that you write down or have your client provide you the names of the columns that you are going to be needing for the report or the dashboard so that you can actually go and validate if those columns are available. Because believe you me, employee number with a number sign can be different from employee ID. It can be different from employee NBR. So when your client tells you they want employee number and salary, assume nothing. Make sure that you and your customers do not equivocate any columns or attributes in the requirements. Number five, discuss the model, the package, or the data module. Now, in some cases, you may have to do joints and unions. You need to know the level of data preparation that has to occur, because if you are not sure of that, you might make the mistake of underestimating your work. If you are going to be doing joints and unions, you really have to understand the business. This leads to number six. Make sure that there's an SME on board. Number six is a subject matter expert. Make sure there's a subject matter expert or someone who knows the business that is going to support you. If you are going to do joints and unions, you are going to need to know if you are to do a left join, a right join, or even a union. And if you don't work for the company, believe you me, you are not going to know how to do your unions and your joints. So communicate that with the client. If it is just a drag and drop, then you don't have any worries and you, have, and you build your reports with the assumption that it is, a, it is a drag and drop and you can meet the expectations of your customers. Your project is going to extend out a little bit if you are going to have to do any joints and unions or potentially even bypass the package. Number seven is deadlines. Make sure that you clearly communicate the deadlines to your customers in terms of what you need to be successful and also ask for the customers to give you an idea of when they expect you to complete the task. Because if you are expected to deliver something in a week, you need to make sure that the subject matter expert is going to be around to give you all the information you are going to need. This is very important. Also, you need to know who is going to help you quality assure the report or the dashboard. Very, very, very important. I mean, everything that I'm talking about is important, but this is very important as well. Even though you're a Cognos Jedi, you cannot tell if the data is accurate or not. So someone on the business side has to tell you if these numbers make sense or not. If someone is not available, then you need to get access to the application so that you can go to the application and double check your work. In some cases, I'll ask for a sample and I'll filter the data based on that sample so that I develop around that sample. As long as my numbers match the sample, 
we hope that everything matches when we start removing the filters, okay? So keep this in mind when you go to a requirements gathering section. Thank you very much.